I am light. I am oxygen. I am energy. I am life. Feel the way its truth resonates with your inner consciousness. Feel it. Beyond being a vessel of energy or just the body you have, you are the living essence of the universe. Hey, hey everyone. Welcome back with Ali with Awakening with Ali. I'm so, so excited for today's guest. I have such an incredible guest. She's a light worker. She's a spiritual teacher. She's a conscious guide, soul astrologer. She's a host of Cosmic Body Podcast and founder of Soul Link, Astrology Mystery School levels one through three and several other courses. She's a self-taught astrologer who's been reading the stars for lifetimes. And she's continued her studies with some of the world's top astrologers. She then devoted herself to learning different types of healing to create her own style of spiritual medicine. By fusing astrology, energetic healing, and intuition, she is able to help her clients heal their wounds, clear old patterns, and help them come back home to their heart. Danielle has given talks on mysticism and astrology at Scorpio's Mykonos, Mykonos, Glossier Headquarters in NYC, Soho House, and so much more. And you guys, I cannot wait to get into all things of her work. She's been featured in so many places, but truly her Instagram is how I found her. She inspires me with what she shares and says so much. She's so real about her awakening, how she's taken things to a really, um, I don't want to say simple, but a very like basic level in the sense of being a human as we are all so human living in this uh, wildness speaks to her awakening so beautifully especially when I was just kind of starting to go through mine and it was such a place of like oh thank you I feel seen so I'm so honored to have her Daniel Page thank you so much for being here thank you so much for having me on thank you for the intro and yeah let's jump in there's so much yeah let's do it I love it I'm so excited okay so let's start with your awakening like because obviously this is awakening with Allie. So like, I love to dive into people's awakening. So how did that start for you? And like, what was that like? It was massive and shocking. And um, I will give you the brief. Um, my long story, my long version of it is episode one and two of Cosmic Body Podcast. I go into detail. Um, basically, I my background is interior design and architecture. So I, that's why if you see my Instagram right now, I am decorating my place. I love it. I mean, some people are shocked with uh, my design choices. I'm like, do you know that this is what I used to do before I was talking to spirits? Uh, so um, my background's interior design and architecture. I was doing that. And although I love design, there was something missing for me, but I had no idea what it was. This is before. So it's now 14 years ago and um, or probably even like 14, 15, 16, when I started feeling like something was not right. But I went to grad school for interior architecture, four and a half years of my master's. So I'm like, wait a minute. So now I don't want to do this, but, but there's something else, but I didn't even know what that was. So I would leave um, my job. I was working at one of the top architecture firms that everyone would love to be in, but I wasn't satisfied. And my boyfriend at the time would be like, you know, you should be so grateful. This is such a prestigious firm. And it was, and there's nothing against the firm. It's just, there was something not right for me. And so I, um, I just wasn't happy. I would go home and I would cry and I just felt really sad and miserable and lost inside. And that's why also, when you hear more of my story, I continue to do this work because I know what it's like to feel lost, confused, scared, and and just like, what am I doing? So anyways, fast forward, long story, very, very short. I got dumped in France on my 30th birthday. It pushed me to move back home to California um, in with my parents because that's when the economy happened or the economy crashed. And I had, um, there was no design job. So I had no money now crying over a breakup. So I'm living with my parents and I started having an awakening and it started with dreams that were very real. And then all day long, I would be like, wow, you know, I remember having that dream, but then I saw it in front of me and it was almost like the twilight zone. That's the only way I could describe it. I had no idea of anything outside the physical realm, even though I had like moments maybe throughout my life, but I never thought about it because if your consciousness is not open to it, you're not going to expand and go there. Right. So I was just like, what is going on? Twilight zone. And then um, I woke up and I ended up seeing spirits in the middle of the night. And that shocked me so much. And I thought I was losing my mind. I got really scared for my mental health. I'm like, wait, is there something wrong here? 
But then I realized, wait a minute, um, if I, if there was something really wrong and I was losing my mind and going crazy, I wouldn't have the awareness of that I look crazy right now because I'm seeing something. So that shifted everything for me. And then it was this long journey of literally I was led by spirit. I go into meditation. I, w- I would sit and I start having my awakening and you almost can't explain what the awakening is because it's an inside job. It's an internal job where I started shifting. I started seeing things differently. I started, um, you know, seeing the world through different eyes. And I'm like, whoa, what are these eyes? Like, what is going on? Like, what is happening? And um, it was a journey and it wasn't easy and it wasn't fun. You know, I feel like I was in six years of boot camp. So, and that was, and then I went through another awakening with my health crisis, right? So we're always changing. But anyways, that's what led me to astrology. And I always say astrology is like my gateway drug because that's what started me on this path. And now it's astrology, but it's so much more than that. It's consciousness, it's energy, it's understanding ourselves as quantum beings, but also not bypassing and being human. Like, how do I wake up in the morning? and What do I do? How am I tending to my body? How am I taking care of my physical and channeling other realms at the same time? Because it's all, it's not just one, it is literally all. So that's it. And then amazing. That's it. No, that's amazing. Thank you so much for summing that up. I can relate so hard and so much, which is why I felt so drawn to you. And now you speaking to that, even like I feel the heart tug. It's like, you know, I was celebrity stylist, you know, in LA for over a decade and, you know, was obsessed with fashion. And, you know, when I first fell into the celebrity in Hollywood scene and changed like so much of who I was like, you know, outside looking and inside looking and all the things. And I just remember going from a place of like feeling so fulfilled in such a short amount of time and being like, oh my God, I'm hitting every accolade and working with every celebrity and all these things and getting so many opportunities to like one day feeling so dark and unfulfilled and not knowing why I felt so alone. And I had just gotten pregnant with my first daughter and I thought I was losing my mind. Like I was like, why do I feel so dark? Why do I feel so empty? Why is none of this fulfilling me anymore? Why do I literally feel like I'm about to leave this and have no clue what's coming next? And so I appreciate so much of what you just shared because so many, I think, of light workers, way showers, like all these different people come from those kinds of spaces. Like they've been where, you know, most of the collective is now and have had those awakenings, you know, and have realized like, wow, this doesn't fulfill me. This isn't working, even though on paper, it looks great. Even though everyone's looking at my life and is like, oh my God, this is amazing. And that was like me, you know, when I walked away from it all, people were like, what are you doing? What do you mean you're not styling anymore? Like, what's wrong with you? You built this whole career. Like everybody thought I was going crazy. I thought I was going crazy and I had no idea what was on the other side. And I love that you said, like, once you started kind of really feeling into like your own spirit and started like allowing those awakenings and all that, but at the same time, feeling the darkness of it and speaking to that, I think is so important, especially so much of the collective waking up right now and that are all kind of going through like their own dark nights to soul. It's not easy and it's so heavy, like you said. So can you speak to that a little bit of like what the collective kind of is going through and also related to like how you were saying, even in your own awakening, how dark and alone that was at first? Because I feel like that vulnerability is so important right now. Absolutely. Um, I've been so alone and so confused and crying, feeling like I didn't have friends. And I'm telling you, my life right now couldn't be further from that. And so that's why I share that with people, because I want to show people the duality and the polarity that can exist. For many years in my 30s, I literally I had, you know, one of my best friends, she lives in Australia. So, but we talk every day, but I literally told her, like, I feel so lonely and I feel so alone and I just didn't have community and I didn't have my friends. And um, that's something that I had to experience for a while as I was shifting because things were coming into alignment. But in terms of what we're going through now as a collective, you know, when 2020 hit and all that started going down, I had a moment where I'm like, I get it. I get why I went through my awakening over a decade before this, because I said, I am here and I know how to help lead people. Like I got this. I can't tell you I have every single answer at all, but I got it because this shit doesn't scare me because I've been through so much. Right. So when everyone was freaking out, it's like, okay, let's go (laughs) gather around. Let me talk about what's, what's sort of happening. This is a dark night of the soul for many of you, your first time welcome. This is what's going to happen. It's not going to be pretty. And this is what needs to happen. So as um, everything is as above, so below on a collective, we are in one of the biggest changes 
of, I, it's not even our lifetime, it's millenniums, um, what's happening. We are the old structures. And, you know, I'm going to use words here because I don't, we don't have the words. So that's why when people say the new earth, the old earth, we're, we're repeating these words because it's a frequency that doesn't even have words attached to it. So I don't always like to use popular trending words, but sometimes you have to because there's no other way of explaining what's going on. So yes, the old earth as we know it, the old frequency, the old vibration is collapsing. And that when that happens, it looks like chaos and it looks like shit. And we are in the middle of this. And the reality is, and it's not scare people, but it's not like a one week thing. It's not a one year thing. This is a journey that we're going through because we're going through a collapse of the old, almost like the old empire, the old structures. We are moving from very 3D structured. I'm not even going to say we're moving to 5D. I think that's actually very overplayed. I think um, Earth is ascending through 4D and we are moving through 4D consciousness. It's very rare that any soul is really in 5D right now. That's It's very rare. I mean, there are some people operating, um, but the reality is most people are not. And that's okay, because let's not be somewhere where we're not. We are moving, and but we are ascending to higher dimensions or higher frequencies and when that happens, more light comes to the planet. And when more light comes to the planet, it's almost like these flash floods. We see the human residence spiking, right? And then our physical body is having a hard time to deal with it because our physical bodies are dense. So the density is the light is activating with the density and it's pushing out the density. This is why we feel sick. This is why we get flu-like symptoms. This is why ascension. This is all part of the journey. And we also might have shit wrong with us because we're eating chemicals and they're spraying chemicals and we're putting stuff in our body that is not good for us because they're trying to kill us, right? And that's not a conspiracy theory. That's literally, if you look at the soil, if you look at what they're spraying, if you if you just look around and pay attention, what's in the water, you know, not conspiracy, actually real right? So there is physical stuff happening as well as emotional, energetic stuff happening at the same time. So we are going through a massive, a massive awakening. And and the biggest thing to summarize that is what I can say is when you work on your emotions, it's actually moving your physical body as well, because your physical body is the last to get it. It's like, it starts energetically and it moves physically. And so that is why so many people are also getting physically sick. Yes, this you know, COVID situation, which I'm not going to get all into it. But to be honest, I don't think anything is in isolation. So whether whether it was released from the lab, whether they did it on purpose, whether it really was from that, you know, kind of irrelevant for what I'm going to say at the moment in time, because it's really nothing happens in isolation. So the fact that that exists shows me how much we are transmuting and transforming because yes, we are getting sick. Viruses make us sick and viruses also attack us and viruses also move out the energy um, of the old density so that we can bring in more light. So it's sort of um, a whole all encompassing process. Does that make sense what I'm saying? You know, I, I'm not going to get stuck on who did this, Fauci did this. It's, it's kind of irrelevant for this conversation right now. But what is relevant is nothing happens in isolation. And this is and anyone that knows that got COVID and most, almost everyone vaccinated, not vaccinated, you got COVID and it's a massive, massive up leveling. I love that you said that because first off, it takes the fear out of it, right? It takes out the, yeah. the 3D, the matrix, the programming, all the things that come with it. And I can speak to that because I had it last year in May of 2021. And I remember, you know, I never really had a fear around it. It was more everybody else feeding it to me. I never really had a fear of getting it. But when I did, I knew I got it immediately. Yeah. Like I was like, immediately knew I got it. Yeah. And I honestly kind of allowed myself just to go through it. Like I laughed about it. I remember turning to my husband, Justin, and was like, no, I definitely have COVID. And then it was like, yep, sure enough, I did. And I went through and, and it actually was pretty intense on me, I think, because I have asthma and whatever. And I had just had my daughter. And so my body was still like recovering. Like it was a perfect storm. And so it took me about like 11 days to recover. But I never went into the fear. I just really like leaned into the discomfort of it. And, you know, of course, took my supplements did all the things that I knew to do naturally and that would help me and get me through it. But it was just so interesting because the more I realized I leaned into that discomfort, when I came out of it, I felt like you said that, that spiritual upgrade, like I felt like I received more downloads and all of a sudden, like I felt lighter and I felt like I had shed so much. And I thought to myself, wow, this is so interesting because so many are so fearful to 
go here. And not to say, of course, some people haven't, you know, lost people to it and have had tragedies and all that and, and not take away from that. But I do agree with you. Like there is this upgrade for those who I believe personally are willing to kind of shed all that as like you were saying, when you get sick and move through it into a higher state of consciousness. A thousand, thousand percent. And that's what I'm saying is nothing happens in isolation. And, you know, we saw energy of this coming in, in 2019, you know, any astrologer that was really doing astrology knew there was something coming. And in 2019 in November, I did a live and I'm like, you guys, 2020 is going to be a shit show. And everyone's like, no, 2020 vision. And I'm like, nope, I still have the video on my Instagram. I'm like, nope. I'm telling you, it's not. And some of my friends in September, when I was telling them in 2019 of September, they were like, don't be negative. And I was like, no, it's not negative. I'm literally just telling you what's going on. And now they're like, oh shit, I'm going to listen to you. Like They're like, okay, next time. They're always like, okay, I'm not going to doubt that. And I'm like, yeah, because this is, this is the energy. This is the frequency. And you can see cycles. So again, it, it is very tragic. A lot of people got very sick, you know? And this is where we're at as a collective, you know, like it's not, it is very sad. And there's a lot of bullshit that went with it too. So it's like, this is waking us up. Yeah, absolutely. And, and of course, like you were saying before with the duality, it's like holding that duality of that darkness that it is very heavy, very sad. There is a lot going on and there's Mm -hmm. a lot of beautiful light coming in, as you said, as the frequency of the planet is rising as we are shifting so many are waking up and so much is changing and so many of those old systems are collapsing whether people are conscious of it or not like you said we are going through it as a collective and more and more are waking up because more and more is not making sense more and more of these quote-unquote conspiracies are coming to light that are actual facts like you said and are true and it's becoming almost in my opinion more and more in our faces of like Oh shit, I'm not crazy. Because let me tell you, I especially like after everything of like waking up in my own way and waking up in Hollywood and all these things, I was like, okay, I'm really, I'm going crazy. Like I really did feel that way for a minute. And then I, (laughs) and then like when I was able to get myself like really grounded in my spiritual practices and really start to like figure out like, no, I'm not, I'm just awakening and I don't have anyone around me right now that is in this space. And when you speak to, you know, also uh, the fall off for yourself of different friendships and even that breakup and how alone you felt. I mean, can you talk to that for a second? Because I also think in this awakening of what we're going through, so many artists like going through that too, with jobs, with family, with friends, like bless you, with all of it, you know? And I feel like it's so important to talk to it because I definitely have people that I thought that I would have in my life that were there for literally my entire life are gone. Um, You know, it was funny. I was laughing because it was my birthday, you know, a week or so ago. And I said to my husband, I'm like, wow, so many of the people that I would have thought would have reached out didn't. And it, it was also almost like a test to me because I honestly wasn't rocked by it. And the old alley would have totally been rocked and shattered by it. And I just had like this inner peace of like, okay, well then that's like where it's at, you know? And, and it was such a beautiful feeling of kind of holding that duality and being like the observer of my own life. So like, can you speak to a little bit of kind of what that was like for you when you speak to also how you mentioned that um, shifting and how it was aligning other things for you, like what that means to you? Because I feel like a lot of people need to hear that. Yeah. Okay. So feeling alone um, and confused, you know, it's a big part of the journey. And listen, not every single person is going to go through this because not every person is sold contract is to awaken to maybe the level where we're going. But most people are because we're literally like energetically splitting off into other frequencies. Um, yeah, it was very hard. Um, you know, I'm going through, here's the thing. We're going to go through many up levels in our life. It, I'm never, it's never like, oh, this ended and I'm good now. And I'm so enlightened. No, (laughs) it's like, okay, I went through this cycle, this upgrade, maybe there's a pause, maybe there's a reprieve. Right. And then something else comes along and that's just the journey. So where we're going and what we're doing, there's going to be many times throughout our life where we feel like we can't relate to our friends anymore, where we feel like um, 
the things that brought us joy are not bringing us joy anymore. Um, and that could come down to, I mean, I see it all the time with a partner, with a lover, um, with, with friends, with a job. And the reality is, is it's painful, but it's also going to happen. And the more we accept this and surrender to it is that, you know, with relationships, it's beautiful if we stay together our whole life, like, oh my God, what a dream, how beautiful. But the reality is that's not always the case because most people get into relationships before they have their awakening or even their first one before they go through more consciousness shifts. So um, I bring that up because I know that a lot of people are most likely going through that and they have to understand that it's okay to feel scared. It's okay to be like, I was so in love with this person and it, it's shifting away. You know, I know one of my good friends just got married not a long time ago and they're now separated and they, you know, been together for a very long time even before they got married. And it's just that, you know, I've done both of their charts and I can see that they're just shifting in consciousness and maybe they'll come together at some point, but right now it's just not. And, and that happens and that's okay. Right. We have to understand these journeys are not always exactly what we would write, but it's a line for what our soul needs and for our highest good. So when I was going through my, um, even years of feeling alone, it was really sad and it was really hard, but that's also why I'm as strong as I am now. If people follow my work and see who I am is because I've been through so much. And when you can't do anything, and I'm going to be very raw and vulnerable right now, when you can't do anything, but sit in your house, in your bed, right? I mean, sure. I obviously went out and did things right. But you know, you're, you're having a moment, you're coming back and you're by yourself sitting in your bed and you're shifting and you're going through this awakening and you don't want to do drugs to numb it. You know, you don't want to drink. You don't want to smoke. You don't want to go shopping. You don't want to eat. Um, when you're really having to just sit with it and be that is lifetimes of lifetimes and work. And that can be like a nighttime. That could be a weekend. Right. And I did this for so many years and literally sat in my shit and had moments of absolute tears when I'm like, I don't know if I can even handle this path anymore, you know, begging the universe to kind of just like, make me be an accountant, make me have a normal job. Right. Which would never work for my soul. And I think I get an accountant and say, I need one actually I'm tired of doing right now. <laughs> but this journey is, if we're really paying attention, it's so aligned while we're using our free will to really make decisions and choose what we want to do. It's a balance of both, really. A lot of people will tell you otherwise, but I don't believe, and again, this is not like I'm better or they're not, but I don't believe that they have the consciousness to understand um, really what it takes to be aligned with your soul. And when you do, that could be moments where just sadness and you have to find the joy and find the beauty in this. You know, I, I'm enjoying my beautiful oceanfront place with this new furniture I'm buying because for 11 years, I lived in a rent controlled, tiny, tiny, tiny apartment, literally didn't go shopping for years when I had no money, $7 in my bank account, crying at the gas station one time, literally did I wake up in anxiety, don't know how I was going to pay my water bill. I had no parents to help me. I've had no man. I've been single pretty much for the most part. I mean, I've, I've relationships, but nobody's supporting me. And there's nothing wrong if you do, because that's your journey. There's nothing wrong if you do. That just wasn't my path, right? So why am I bringing all this up? Because this is, this is the true journey of awakening. Not everyone's path needs to look the same, but it's also not roses all the time, right? It, it's just really allowing your soul to come through and to hear it. If that makes yeah. sense. No, it totally makes sense and resonates to me. And I'm sure to others listening and watching it. And I appreciate that you said, you know, the sitting in your shit and the, you know, cause I've definitely experienced that over and over again and how you spoke to the things that used to kind of bring you joy that no longer resonate and how you don't want to shop. You don't want to numb. You don't want to drink. You don't want to do this. You don't want to do that. And you're kind of just laying there and sitting in it and you're like, okay, so I'm just going to be in this darkness and I have no idea what to do and where, how to get out of bed or how to move through. And my friendships are falling off. My family doesn't recognize me or the list goes on and you're right it, it is so hard and trusting in that soul alignment of like my soul is giving me this for a reason there is a reason I'm seeing this but being in it in the moment like you said it's hard 
And it's still human, like you spoke to, because like how you didn't have the money in your bank account, how you would go to the gas station and cry. Like these are real experiences. We can tap into, of course, our soul and, you know, and and have trust. But when you're in the experiences of like Uh what's happening, it's very real. And you're like, what the fuck, you know? (laughs) And so, you know, I appreciate you sharing that because I think, again, so many are experienced that are starting to experience that and are like, what is happening to me? Like, what is wrong? Absolutely. And it's a lot. And like I said, we are going through massive, massive awakenings right now. And I get that it's confusing because I was confused and I get that we just want to like freak out. But the reality is, this is why I continue to do the work in the world that I do. The more that we breathe, like you said, be the observer, doesn't mean bypass. It doesn't mean not feel our feelings. It means literally sitting in your bed crying if you need to. And then not attaching a story to it and then not making that your future. And then realizing that you need to process your emotions and grief because it actually is leaving your body the density while more light is coming in, right? So it takes a very conscious person to really kind of survive um, the earth plane right now. And I'm going to say the reality of earth is not conscious and I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just stating facts. Most people are unconscious. And we saw that in 2020 with how many people obeyed and listened. That's all. Yeah, you're right. No, I, I, and I completely agree with you. And, and to that, in your opinion, how do you navigate that when that is, I mean, around you, around me, around all of us, right? There are more and more waking up. There are more and more, I do believe coming online every day, every minute, more and more, as you said, there is a shift. There's as the uh, light is coming in, the higher frequency, people are kind of being forced into this, whether they like it or not. Uh, Welcome. Right? Well, welcome, exactly. But at the same time, how do you, uh, I guess maybe this goes back to what we were talking about before of like being the observer, but in your opinion, How do you personally navigate that? Because obviously those are some of our neighbors. Those are some of our friends, our family members, the list goes on. What does that look like for you? Because I know that's definitely been very hard for me. So here's the thing. The reality is it wasn't always like this, but it's been developed over time because my path has been very hard, but I do have a gene inside of me. I don't have the name for this gene. I'm kind of making this up, but so you understand, I have this gene inside of me. It's called the not giving a fuck gene. (laughs) Okay. But I also realize, and I do deeply have compassion that not everyone has that. So for me, especially now at this point, again, it wasn't always like that. I had to kind of develop more into this, but it was always lingering under the surface. I truly am not swayed by people's opinion. I don't care what other people do. You can do whatever you want to do. What you tell me to do is not what I'm going to do, okay? Because I am so in tune with my soul and who I am. Doesn't mean I know everything and I'm still learning as I go, but this is a true test in sovereignty. Well, we could call it test. We could call it lesson because this is an experience that we're here for. This is a true lesson. So a lot of people have to do a lot of work on standing in their own power and being sovereign. And I get it. You could tell me, but this is this, and I would have lost my job. And I, I, I get it. These are all real. And, and they're not real at the same time. Because these are all experiences that if you look from a very small 3D filter, we only have one option, and that's it. And what this is showing people is, okay, this is what it looks like right now. But there, if you expand your scope of consciousness, there's going to be another way. Maybe it's we say no, maybe it's we have to fight it a little bit, right? You know, fighting quotes. Maybe we have to get creative. Maybe we walk away. Maybe something new comes in. You know, there's not one. If you think about how quantum the universe is and you think about all the possibilities, even a situation that's hard. And trust me, I have a lot all the time that I'm like, oh, shit, you know, like there's no other way. But then I remind myself, not true. Right. And then you kind of have to zoom out and look at the dots. So this is, again, this is why I go back to, it takes a very strong person to survive earth right now. So, you know, it's a matter of really trusting yourself that even if all your friends are doing something, is that enough reason? Like, what would you tell you? It's like, I grew up with parents. If all your, if all your friends are doing drugs, would you, you know, like, right. That was like my error. Right. Right. So, but it's the same thing now. If everyone is doing something and it doesn't resonate with you, would you do it, right? And so 
we are the example. So what are the example you're teaching your kids? Or even if you don't have kids, what is the example that you're teaching your audience or whoever is watching you? And what is the example that you're teaching your own hearts? So it does. It takes a very strong person to tap in and be like, I am not going to do this, even though the world is pressuring me or, or the world is telling me to think a certain way and be a certain way. I'm not going to do this. And there's nothing else I can say except for this is the journey of evolution, right? Everyone wants to be so awake and you can wear the spiritual clothes. And you can say the spiritual jargon. But at the end of the day, are you in alignment and are you living your truth? That's really the spirituality for me. I don't care what you wear, or what you look like. If you go to Burning Man or not, that doesn't matter to me. It's what are you doing? A lot of people that go to Burning Man are bypassing. And then a lot of people that go to Burning Man are completely aligned and conscious and ahead of the curve, right? So it's like, I don't care what you do. How are you living your daily life? That's really important to me. Yeah, I love that. Not to me, but also I'm saying me, but I'm also like speaking in terms of consciousness. That's important yeah. to consciousness. Of course. Right. Well, and what you're speaking to for anyone, you know, listening and watching is embodiment. It's really coming into that space, you know, and I had to learn that too. It was like, when I first kind of waking up, it was like, you know, getting into all the, like you said, spiritual jargon, starting to dive into all the books, reading podcasts, finding you, you know, all the people to follow all the things. And I was like, at first in my mind, oh, like, oh, I so understand this. And then it was like, <laughs> no, you don't, you know, it was like, that's what everything started changing and shifting and more and more kept coming at me to like further awaken and further step up and expand and all these things. And still now, as you said, it's journey, but I have also learned more and more to become the observer, as you said, and to embody what we speak about, to embody who we are authentically, to step into that as uncomfortable as that is, because like you said, you trust in your soul. And I also love that you said, you know, the whole compliance and everything that went on in 2020, it's so true. It's like, you know, we went from a place where same as me, like my parents would say, like, you know, if, if all your friends jumped off a bridge, would you do it too? The That's what we no. grew up with. You right, know? right. Exactly. Same you know, same thing. And, and and the answer was no. And now it's like, oh yeah, no, we should, because you know, everyone's doing it. But everyone's the doing it and they to do it and you'll be canceled right. if you don't. I mean, that's the kind of biggest spiritual bypassing I've ever seen in my entire life from people who consider themselves woke and conscious. No, it's actually scary and frightening. Right, exactly. And we know, obviously, without going down that rabbit hole, there's so much more to it. Um, so much more. <laughs> and each your own. If someone's journey is to choose one thing, go do it. Right. Go do it. But right. to impose any other belief on anyone else, that is the opposite of sovereignty, that is the opposite of consciousness, that is the opposite of where we're going. So again, we live in an inverted, backwards, upside down universe and matrix so whatever they're telling you to do, flip it and then do the opposite. And then you're going to thrive. Like that's what you got to learn. Good, good, good advice. Write that, write that down, everyone. So I want to get into, you are so passionate about astrology. Astrology has become a huge part of your spiritual toolkit and what you speak to, what you create courses, you know, how you show up obviously very much in your soul alignment. Um, I love learning about astrology. I'm still very much uh, in the beginning, you know, intermediate stages, but everything I've learned and absorbed so far has been so fascinating and related so much to my own life and my life path and alignments and things. So can you kind of get into, obviously it's a whole nother episode I'll have, have you back for, but could you get into a little bit of like why you found astrology, how maybe astrology were found you and why it's so important, especially now for yourself and the collective to kind of understand like what this is, um, you know, playing out, uh, like you said, when you were getting the feeling in 2019 of like what was coming in 2020, kind of talk to that a little bit. Absolutely. So um, the, from what I know, from what spirit has shared with me is again, astrology was my gateway drug when I was waking up because my first of all, my soul has done astrology for many lifetimes. This is not something new. When I discovered it, I went to dinner with a friend at this horrible job I was working at. Um, he was the IT guy. We became friends. We went to dinner one night. He was like undercover, you know, like, um, you know, all into this stuff, but, and I was just kind of coming to be, and he was like, do you know anything about astrology? And I'm like, no, besides the horoscopes. And he's like, do you want me to read your chart? I'm like, sure. And then he didn't really know me. And he read my chart and I'm like, wait a minute, how did you know so much about like who I am as a person, you know, as a soul. And then that night I went home, Googled, you started Googling astrology and literally read everything I could about it until the sun came up, the sun rose. And I was still this was hook, line, and sinker. So then this started my journey. And then from there, I spent literally, because I was living at home with my parents, going through my awakening, just crying every day, right? I spent 14, 15 hours a day 
writing out astrology, putting things on the, I look like that in the movie, A Beautiful Mind with like things all over the wall. That's what I was doing with astrology because all of a sudden my soul, it activated and my soul came alive. And I started doing astrology really first for me. I'm like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I did interior design. Now I don't know what I want to do. I don't even know who I am anymore. So I'm like, I need to figure this shit out. So I started I'm like, okay, well, let's start with what are my gifts? What does the chart tell me? Okay, well, I had to figure out, you know, reading a chart and then I started di- diving in and then I'm like, oh yeah, what are my challenges? What's this? And so I started using it for me really with no intention of anything else. And then as I started progressing with that, I started realizing, oh my God, wait a minute, I'm here to help people. I'm here to do something. And you have to understand this was 14 years ago. This is before Instagram and before everyone was on, you know, everyone was like a life coach and, a, you know, business coach. So I didn't have any concept of what this was. And so all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, I'm going to be like a psychic and do this shit. Like I didn't even, I'm like, what? Like I didn't, couldn't even understand or fathom, but it felt right in my soul. So I kept following it. So then I just started doing this. I started, I made a website. I started doing this. And over the years, as I've evolved, it's become so much more of astrology. And listen, there's, there's amazing astrologers and there's better astrologers out there than me. What everyone has their own niche. What I'm so good at is that I don't just do astrology, I channel as well. So sometimes I might not have all the technical words. I mean, I, I know astrology very well, but I still might not have all the technical words for someone that's maybe been doing it for 30 years, but I'm getting the information because it's coming through my channel, right? So everyone has just a different niche and a different take on it. And you just have to find what resonates with you. And I love it because I help people understand their soul and I went from me teaching or reading birth charts for people. And now I don't really do that many. I'll do them every once in a while. But then I started teaching my astrology mystery school. And I'm showing people, giving them the tools to learn themselves, which is actually way better than me reading someone's chart. It's giving you the tools, teaching you how to do this to understand your soul blueprint. So I love astrology. I mean, it's literally life-changing. If people don't know their birth chart, everyone should. But that doesn't mean getting it from something online because it's not going to give you the truth. And also every astrology is different. Just like you could get a good haircut and you could get a bad haircut. You can get a really good reading and you get a reading that someone scares the shit out of you and doesn't help you evolve. So you just have to be aware of that as well. That's so cool. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of like for me too. When I first slowly started uh, awakening and diving in, I was like getting my, you know, my chart, you know, uh, given to me and then like understanding my daughter's charts and my husband's chart and then like how we were all kind of mixing and aligning and, and everything. And then, you know, my rising and my moon and you know all these things. And it was like, wait, what? Like, I just thought it was a cancer, you know? And then it started like opening me up to like, Oh, this makes sense. Why actually like half the time people would tell me about things about being a cancer never raised, resonated for me. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, parts of that work, but like not all of that adds up. And so it's you like, your Mercury okay. in Aries. I'm sorry, in Leo. Is your Mercury in Leo? No, I, you know, I have pregnancy brain, so I literally saved this in my notes. So yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> real life, I like literally saved it because I, I know myself. So yeah. I, so I am a cancer sun, yep. Capricorn rising and Taurus moon. Would you know your, does it say your Mercury? Like, I don't know if that's a list or is it a chart that you could read? Uh, it's just like, a, like they gave me, you know, like my, like my rising, my moon oh, and my sun. Oh, that's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Because yes. I feel like you might have a Mercury in Leo. Um, oh, okay. And what is, okay. So what is a Mercury? Because this is like cool to break yeah, down. Yeah, because your, your Mercury is your speech, your communication, your thinking, and it could only be the same um, sign as your sun sign or the one in front or the one after. Okay. Cause the Mercury ah. is that far from the sun. And so again, I don't know, you could have fire somewhere else, but I sense a lot of fire energy in, in you. Um, and wait, you said your moon, oh, your moon was Taurus. You said, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think you do have some fire and something else in your chart. Okay. Uh-huh. And so, um, Mercury and Leo is someone that wants to use their voice, um, wants to get, like, get on stage and, and share and, and light people up and inspire people and activate people. So, um, I can, I can see you having that, or maybe your Mars is, is some in a fire sign. So, you know, Very just, cool. you know it, 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 there's so many different ways. Yeah. I, the biggest thing is I hate when people are like, if I tell them I do astrology, they're like, oh, guess my sign. And I'm like, listen, what's going to happen? <laughs> you're probably going to get your south node, your moon, your rising or your Mercury. And then you're going to be like, oh, you didn't get it. And I'm like, you don't understand astrology. It's so much more than your sun sign. Right. <laughs> that's, not right. that's not even it. <laughs> 
Yeah, no. And that's why for me, when I was like learning about like rising and, and all that, I was like, wait, and I was looking at mine. I was like, wait, so and that's why the cancer didn't just resonate for me. Like yeah. always when oh, I found okay. out I was a cancer, it just, the things I'd read about, you know, in all different astrology places, whether it was online oh, or somebody would send me. More. Yeah. I was like, I don't fit into this whole situation. So no. you, like, I mean, so it, it's just interesting when you say even the other things, and I'm curious, what is like, I've never heard of CM learning. What does it mean? Like the mercury, like if I have a mercury in, you know, Leo or Mars, like what, what is, I guess, you know, I know rising, I know my moon, I know your sun. What, what, what is mercury or like, how, what is the, I guess, definition mercury, if I'm asking? It is your uh, speech and your communication. So it's the way you speak, the way you process, the way you take in information and the way you share. So mm-hmm. I have a mercury in Aries. Um, Aries is very, it's a fire sign. So that's why I'm not afraid to speak my mind. And it's also very, Aries is very, has an intense warrior energy and it's very to the point and quick and sharp. And so when I, I get information quickly, I speak quickly. Um, I, when I'm channeling, it's like, it's like going so fast because that's just the way I'm processing information. It's quick, 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 mm. quick, quick. Wow. So versus someone with a Mercury in Taurus or Capricorn, they're going to be very deliberate on their word. You can even see it in their speech. They're going to speak slower. They're going to be, and it's not one is better or worse. It's just the way that we deliver our message to the world. So mine is fiery, quick, and to the point. And I'm like, boom, 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 let's get in there. And I also have a lot of fire in my chart. So that makes sense as well, even though I'm a Taurus sun and a Cancer moon. Hmm. So if somebody just saw that, they would think I'm literally at home breastfeeding 50 babies all day long with my picket fence, right? And as much as I love all that, love the home, love doing all this, the rest of my charts, fire and air, you know? So it's like, boom, 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 boom. (laughs) So yeah, you have to understand the whole chart. That's so cool. So how do you find out, obviously someone can work with you, but how do you like, you know, now you've intrigued my interest of like, okay, how do I find out what my mercury is? How do you, how do you know that if you already know, you know, your, your, your rising, your moon, your sun and that kind of thing? Well, you can take, I have Astro Hacks um, on my website. They're just small mini courses to act, uh, hack your birth chart. So the okay. first one I go in um, and just kind of show you the wheel and what it's about. And then I have some other ones as you go. I have astrology mystery courses, or um, you can go to my website. You can go to map your birth chart and you can pull up a birth chart. But then even there, you have to understand the birth chart is another language. And so you have to learn to decode it. So if you don't know the symbol of Mercury, I mean, you could just Google what's the astrological symbol of Mercury, then find it in your chart. And then you Google the signs, what they look like, and then you can figure it out, you know? So it's a journey from there. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. I just wrote that down. So I'm like, okay, I need to, <laughs> I need to dive in further and, and uh, look up uh, what this is. Cause I'm always, I'm always learning and evolving with my own astrology Absolutely. as well. And so it's just, it's just cool that you piqued my interest in that. Cause for a while I was like, okay, I'm understanding more of, you know, rising and moon and sun. And now I'm like, okay, yes, here's another piece. Here's another piece. So much more. I mean, astrology for me, I love it. And why I continue to teach my astrology mystery school, even though it's so basic for me, it's like me teaching the alphabet. But if imagine if we don't know the alphabet, how are you going to form sentences? What are you going to do? So I know that it is the most amazing tool that you, I could offer to people is having them understand their soul blueprint because your birth chart, let's talk about this for a moment. I think your audience, yeah. really like it, if, if that's okay, sure. your, your birth chart is the blueprint of your soul. So when you took your first breath here on earth, the stars and the plants were aligned in an energetic format. You breathe that into your soul. So it becomes an energetic blueprint an energetic um, imprint of who you are and what you're doing. So does it dictate your entire life? Some would say yes, but Mostly no. And I'll say no, because we have free will. Yes, the energy is always going to play out, but we have free will of, are we going to use the shadow energy of this? Or are we going to step into the higher octave of it? And that's advanced. And we get there as we evolve through, you know, teaching astrology. But why it's so important is how are you here to use your blue, your soul blueprint? You know, what is your purpose? What is your journey in this lifetime? What is the direction it's going? Right? So this is truly, and it's a, it's like a snowflake. No two are the same. Even if you're twins, you know, yes, they're going to be similar. Um, they'll be a little bit different with the degrees, but also your genetic makeup, even though similar, you still have different um, memories embedded in your soul, right? So it's just so interesting how you can see even twins sometimes playing out in a little bit of a different way, because also how we're choosing to use the energy. 
Wow. Very, yeah. Very to learn about your soul. No, I love that. And I love that you said like, yes, of course it gives us essentially our blueprint and it sets us up on like a life path. But I love that you also said like bringing in the free will aspect of like, oh, you can choose to essentially just let it play out the way it's essentially been brought into you with the energy. Or like you said, you can hold that duality and kind of know what that is and be educated. And, you know, especially obviously in today's world, wake up to that and know, okay, this is a huge part of my blueprint. And then integrate into that higher self and into what your purpose is and what you want to step into versus just flowing with the energy of essentially what is there. And I love that you speak to that because that kind of goes back to what we started the show with, which is like the faith over fear, the true soul alignment, like really being aligned with your purpose and being able to step into that versus just going with the flow and the, like you said, the compliance and the, oh, I'm just going to do this and all the things. Um, and I'm curious, and I, and if this is too much on a podcast, no pressure, but since we said my signs, is there a way to like, without going heavy into a reading to give them a little like small perspective of like mine, so people can kind of understand further kind of how it lays out. And of course, go check let's out your mystery your score. Okay. Let's, okay. Let's I didn't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, it's okay. Let's do that. But also if you don't want to put your birth information, you could put it in the chat and then I don't have to read out loud or you can just say it out loud, whatever. Oh, I don't care. Say. Yeah. I'm going to open a book. Okay. July, July 12th is my birthday. Okay. July 12th. Uh-huh. And 1985 is the year. Okay. And then what time? And then I was born at 8.50 p.m. Hold on. In 8 50 p.m. in New York. You like New York, New York? Yeah. Okay. So like East Coast time. <laughs> yeah. We need the latitude and the longitude. That's why I have to put the yeah, yeah. position. Yeah. New York. Oh, there's a New York, Florida that just popped up. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so July 12, 1985, 8 50 p.m. Yes. in New York. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Oh my God, Mercury and Leo called it. Oh, you called it. Called it. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So okay. yes, you are a Taurus moon, Capricorn rising, um, sun. Okay, sun and Mars conjunct in um, Cancer. Um, Mercury and Leo. Yep, yep, yep. And okay, that's your major fire, but that's a big one. I felt it in you. I'm like, there's no way if you told me you're a cancer, there's no way your mercury was in cancer based on <laughs> like, I just know. That's why I'm like, I could, I could just feel people's energy, you know? Um, but it's interesting because you have your son in, this is a little advanced, but I'm going to show you how there's different ways to find things. You have your son in cancer and it's conjunct meaning touching like peanut butter and jelly Mars. So your son and your Mars work together. So that's a lot of motivation. And so that even though they're both water sign and usually a Mars and a water sign is kind of like, it has to like, oof, like really rev its engine to get going. The sun and the, um, there's two ways to see it. Some astrologers would say the sun shines the light so bright that it diffuses the Mars. Yes. And yes. moments where it kind of works together and it's like combustible because you just, it gives you motivation. So it's kind yes. of both. It's, you're okay. going to kind of oscillate between both. Very okay. interesting. Yeah. As I'm furiously yeah. taking notes, I have to like re-listen to my own podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So your Capricorn rising, your rising sign is the way we move through life. So it's your filter. Like what glasses are you wearing? What view are you moving? How are you moving through life? I'm a Sag rising. So for me, it's all about truth, freedom, travel. Like if you follow me, you know that I love to travel and I'm always speaking truth, right? Or truth that comes through my consciousness, right? My channel. So Capricorn rising is very slow and steady. So you might have Usually Capricorn rising, as when you were younger, you were probably older. You had like a lot of responsibility and it felt heavy. And as you get older, you're getting younger. So you're kind of age reversing like Benjamin Button too, as you get older, because you learn how to work with your um, Capricorn energy. So it's also um, being a little bit more deliberate, okay, with your path and your steps. Um, and then your chart ruler, which rules Capricorn is Saturn. And this is very important because Saturn is exactly sitting on your MC. Your MC is your career angle. So not only is Saturn in the 10th house of career important, you have Saturn in the 10th house of career on your career angle, exactly same degree. So this shows me that for you, career is a humongous part of your journey. You are here to be an authority leader in your field. You're here to put in a lot of work. It might have been that, so I see two things with people with Saturn on the MC. When you're young, you just have no idea what 
what you want to do or like or starting your career, just figuring it out and you just keep like, oh, I can't figure it out. Or people are like early on, like, this is what I want to do. And they like kind of have a career and they kind of go, even if they switch into something else. Either way, there's so much focus and attention into this because it's like the hard work. So in the beginning, when we talked about, I'm like, you have children and running business. I'm like, God bless you. Because I'm like, this is overwhelming for me. But this is also part of it because you are like this. It's like, you're almost like a generator just going, going, going. Do you know your human design as well? I was going to say, I am a generator. (laughs) Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you do have that. I mean, I'm a projector, like tired all the time. So I'm totally different use of my energy. Right. But with the Saturn um, on the MC, this performance and output into the world and being an authority figure is a huge staple of your journey. And also I'll tell you, because your North node is in the fifth house, you are here to learn creative self-expression and use your creativity in the world. And that goes along with your Leo expression as well. Um, Also, you have a flavor of fire, even though your moon is in Taurus, it's in the fifth house, which is the natural house of Leo. So you have a Leo jacket on there. And again, this is complicated, but I'm just showing you. So even though you only have one planet in fire, you have other things that give fire elements in your chart. Again, super complicated, but I'm just trying to drop nuggets to people so they understand this path. Don't worry. In astrology mystery school, we start from the beginning and it's very, you know, but it's basic. so fascinating so, how you're bringing it all together, Danielle. Like even yeah. you saying things I mean, this is what I are do. opening, yeah, yeah, are opening me up and being like, oh yeah, that resonates. And when you were talking about my career, like I always knew I wanted fashion. I was so focused on fashion. I went right for it. Super motivated, did that for so long. And that's why I think too, with my own awakening and shedding and everything I went through, it was such a like mind fuck for me because it was like, everything was falling off and everything I was so motivated in and I was so drawn to was gone. And I lost the resonance. I lost the fire. I lost the passion for all of it. And I was like, what is wrong with me? Like, seriously, what is wrong with me? (laughs) Yeah, I know nothing's wrong with you. It's just, you know, shifting. Also, I'm going to throw something out there. Do you have, um, do you sing or do you have play a musical instrument? I don't. Um, I mean, when I was a kid, I did like, you know, do the drama camp and I did like plays and you know middle school and high school and things like that but nothing ever uh stuck for me I never felt like this strong resonance um so yeah I'm going to tell you something though you have an aspect in your chart that usually tends towards having a beautiful musically inclined talent okay Hmm. now some people know this early on and some people find it later in life But really what it is, is working with frequency and sound and vibration. So whether that's going to come out in another way and, and here, and I'm glad that you said no to me on air, because what I want to explain to people is I've been doing this for 14 years. I've literally said things to people and they're like, nope, nope, nope. I'm like, okay, don't worry about it. Just forget about it until, you know, until it comes back. And later on, they're like, oh my God, you told me something, something. And now it's like, I'm like, yep. So the chart doesn't lie, but we as humans lie to ourselves all the time, right? Sure, and yeah. we don't know ourselves. So there's something in there um, that will be ready to be explored and played with at some point. In your Interesting. Well, and you spoke to sound and vibration and part of my own uh, healing journey. And one of the things that has been one of my modalities that has helped me has been uh, soaking in sound and listening to mm-hmm. vibrations. And actually one of my sponsors of this podcast is, podcast is called Soak, which is soaking in sound. And it's all different vibrations of, you know, just different types of healing uh, for yourself and how you tap into that. And when I kind of started uh, getting into meditation and now being um, in my training for facilitation and breath work and all these things I've found along my journey of what's relighting me up, uh, sound and vibration and color have been a huge part of that. That is exactly what I'm talking about here and where you're going. There's a beautiful gift that you have that not everyone has this that is really going to emerge even more. So dive into that, play with that, sit with it. You don't need the answer tomorrow and you don't have to figure it out. The journey is literally unfolding to the new vibrations that are coming in with that. So it's really, really beautiful. 
How cool. Thank you for sharing. That's so neat. I also love that you said too, like when you speak to people and you share something with them, it's like, oh no, that can't be. And it's funny. I remember years ago sitting with different astrologers and different psychics or people in my life that just randomly showed up, of course, didn't really randomly show up. It felt that way to me, Uh, you know, would say like, you know, you have this healer energy about you. You know, you have this about spirituality. There's a reason why you're drawn to it because you're actually in it. And I used to sit there, you know, as a celebrity stylist and TV personality, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sure. You know, <laughs> right. And you just weren't there yet, but that's what I'm saying. This, th- everything already exists. It's a matter of us. I'm like actually seeing the psychic thing right now to put in words. It's already there. It's just us coming into and having that awareness, but it's already there. I love that. That's, that's, that's powerful. It's already there. I want to say something if we can yeah. start. Um, this is pretty major. So you are going through and have been going through a humongous awakening (laughs) because Pluto transiting Pluto is at 20 now 20 degrees for everyone. Maybe it's 29. No, it's not 29. It's now 28. Let's see. Um, yeah, no 27. It just went back to, because it's so slow moving 27 degrees of Capricorn for everyone. When it moves into Aquarius for the collective, which is 2023 and 2024, and then it will stay in there forever because it takes years to move. Right. Pluto so slow, right? So slow. Okay. We're going to have huge shifts, but part, and so this is twofold, this and the collective, you and the collective. Um, we are breaking down the old structures because Pluto is moving through Capricorn. Capricorn is old government structures. Okay. So as a collective, we are doing this for you personally you happen to have your rising sign at 28 degrees of Capricorn. Pluto is at 27 degrees. It was just at 28. So it's, it's sitting and 27 degrees is one degree away. It's sitting on top of it. This is going to be, and it's been probably the past year, um, year and a half, and in, into the next year, year and a half. You are in the middle of awakening to a new phase that you've never even known before. So what I'm going to tell you is you're in the chrysalis stage. You are from the caterpillar to the butterfly, (laughs) but you're in the field and you, there's no way I'm just telling you from what I know about this, there is no way you can rush this up. You can speed this up, rush through it and know what's going to happen when you're the butterfly, because you don't know because you weren't there. So when I was going through and I told you about my awakening in the beginning, Pluto was on my ascendant. Now it doesn't mean that everyone's going to go through what I went through, but what you see is the old Danielle was dying and then a new one was coming in. So the old alley is literally shedding right now and a new one is coming in. Now this transit, some people will never have this in their life because Pluto is so so slow moving. So it won't get around the whole Zodiac to get to your ascendant. Um, So some people will never have this. You will never have this again. I'll never have this again. You might have Pluto somewhere else, but you will never have this. This is one of the most influential transits of your lifetime, Pluto swing on your ascendant. So I know that you've been feeling for the past year-ish And you will, for the next year, year and a half, huge changes in who you are because you literally have Pluto sitting on your rising sign. The way you're moving and through life is literally being ripped open and shed. Oh yeah, you can say that again. That has been going on for me since like, like obviously 2020 was everyone, right? Like everyone really started opening. But for me, it started around like 2017, 2018, slowly pulling back the layers, then getting pregnant. My first daughter continued to rip back the layers. Then my second daughter in 2020 continued to rip, you know, and so it's and now pregnant with my third baby. Like it's just been so interesting. That actually makes sense with Pluto because Pluto is this, um, Pluto can be the death of a self, the old self. And it's what happens in a death, you're reborn. So I know because when on my chart, I'm going to have my baby when Pluto is, if Pluto is on my moon right now because my um, moon is at 29 degrees of Cancer, which is opposite Capricorn, okay? So, but next year when it comes around, there's going to be-ish, next year-ish, in 2024, a pregnancy. And that's what Pluto does. So you're literally giving birth because that is mm-hmm. literally like a portal that's happening for you. Wow. So it makes sense that you're having your other baby with this Pluto here. <laughs> And, and thank you for sharing that because I actually, it's so, I'm getting chills because I actually posted last night a reels that like, just like, I felt this like major tug in my heart. I have to send it to you uh, when we get off. And I spoke to going through this butterfly transformation oh, and this, <laughs> and this like chrysalis and this yes. like shedding. And like you were saying, like this literal dying of your old self of like, 
what is going on? And I feel like for, you know, almost a year and a half, that's what I felt like I was going through. It was like this mourning of myself between old Allie and motherhood and all the new and the old, like just all changing. And then everything literally not resonating from family to friends, to career, to the list goes on to moving States because literally God source the universe told me to move, like just going with yeah. everything and winding up in Tennessee and being like, I still don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm just showing up, man. <laughs> oh, I was sent to Miami, literally was sent here going when I was going through some kind of breakup situation, a situation, right? No one knows what it is. Um, a breakup when I'm like, wait a minute, you want me to move to Miami where this person is? And that's when spirit gave the information. And I just came back from LA with all my best friends and I love hiking and then they have great healthy food. And I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I not living here? But then I got the information again. I need to be here for my vibration. So we might not always have all the answers, but you have to trust it. It's completely that. Yeah. I love that. And thank you for sharing that because again, I think so many are going through this and those that are listening are like, oh, I'm doing it, but I have no idea why I'm doing it. And that's what that was me. It was like, I turned to my husband in 2020 and was like, yeah, you're going to think I'm crazy because he's very grounded and he's Capricorn and all the things. And, and I was like, and I am telling you, we are leaving California. I feel it. Like yes. there is a change. We're moving. It's happening. Yes. And, and, it, and it just did. But it was like this like wild, like, what are we doing? What's happening? We're doing what? We've been here for a decade. Like we changed our lives, We're, you know, and, and it's still been this like beautiful, like, opening and just trusting but you're right the more I trust the more I just allow the more I see open up for me and the more even though it doesn't make sense to me in my logical ego mind the more in spirit it does make sense to me so beautiful yep we have to trust that's I keep talking about Miami journey it's like so funny because I'm like what am I doing here but I know I I, I (laughs) I know I need to be here so it's the same thing we have to just listen to that but yes, you're, I wanted to bring that up because it is a major transformation. And there's yeah, more thank you for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate it. And, and it makes sense also why for me, you know, for so long, I was trying to, like you said, kind of trying to figure it out. I finally just kind of put my hands in the air and surrendered and was like, okay, I'm just going to be in this and in this uncomfortableness and just let everything fall off. But I have no idea what else I'm doing and just let it all fall. And then I got the sole guest when I saw, you know, a, a thing posted, you know, random, not really random of breath work and really felt the sole yes of like, I told my husband, like, okay, I really want to go for this and become a facilitator. And so now I'm, you know, in my training and getting my certification hours. And I really felt like, okay, this is the next level for me of transformation, not just for myself, but why I fell in love with fashion in the first place, I realized was actually the transformation of people from the inside out, not actually just the yep. fashion. Yep. Absolutely. And I mean, so listen, thank you, you for have, sharing. Yeah, you have your sun sign in the seventh house. So you will work with people like partnership um, and um, like helping and serving is very important to you. And it, that can come in many capacities. Yeah. So cool. Thank you so much for bringing that down for yeah. anyone watching and listening. I think it's so fascinating for people to also get to like dive into that. And like you said, you have the mystery school. I'll link all that, of course, in the show notes. This has been so powerful. I'm going to have to come have you back, like just to do another like whole astrology sesh. Um, Is there anything else that you would want to share with us? I know we're recording where we're walking into stepping into the lion's gate. Is there anything you want to share about that before we wrap things up? And then tell us, of course, we can find you and follow you. Yes. Well, I will be doing a beautiful moon circle. I do monthly moon circles. I keep them low price points so everyone can join but i'm going to be doing this one not on the full moon on lion's gate so mm-hmm. on 8 8 um so that will be out soon i don't know when this is going to launch but yeah. um, so i'll be sharing the information about more about lion's gate and sirius and, and the alignment um and the beauty of that but we are we this is a very very powerful time we also have um one of the biggest transits of the year happening right now july 31st august 1st North node conjunct Uranus and Mars. I've done a whole hour long video on it. Um, so people can watch that on my Instagram. Um, and this is a huge turning point for the collective and let's see how it plays out. There could be lots of things. Um, you have to watch the video, but you can find me on Instagram. And I am Danielle page P A I G E. Awesome. Yeah. Everything will be 
linked in the show notes. Yeah. Um, and if this comes out a little bit after Lionsgate, guys, uh, I'll make sure I link all the things so you can go back and watch. And then, like she said, she does do these circles all the time. So I'll link that. So if you do miss this one, you can catch the next one. I'm definitely going to catch one of the next ones. Yeah. Um, and thank you, Daniel, so much for being here and just like sharing your true vulnerability of your own awakening, how you used astrology to really catapult you into, you know, a whole new version of you and like what that trust looks like and continuing just to, you know, like you said, shed and evolve because obviously so many of us are going through it. And it's just so nice to have people who are open and willing to say like, Hey, I'm going through it too. Even if I am in a more, you know, quote unquote awakened space, even if I am teaching this, like I am still living this, I am still human. And I love that. That's how you show up here authentically as well as online and who you are so thank you thank you it's literally these genes that I don't give a fuck gene and the being raw and truthful like it just is what it is you know? yeah it's amazing it's it, it's my jam I think it's so cool everything yeah. we linked in the show notes guys I mentioned soak so uh, just remember that is the frequency that plays before and after this show so thank you to soak if you guys do want to check it out you can go to soak soak.com or the app download it use my code capital a l i 70 it'll give you 70 percent off your first month so you guys can jump in and soak in sound danielle thank you so much again everything in the show notes guys love light and blessings and dive into your astrology and if this gave you a heart tug a soul feel of like ooh, i need to explore this more go find danielle <laughs> thank you thank you